I can't believe it's finally here. I've waited a year and a half for this bike to come in to review it, and I'm super excited. It's the 2021 Norco Torrent S1. All right, here it is, the Norco Torrent S1. This bike looks so good on the geometry numbers alone. This looks so close to what I would design for a rowdy hardtail. I would have a shorter seat tube, I think, to run an even longer dropper. I wouldn't use this gusset. That extra inch is doing nothing for me, and I'd rather be able to run a longer dropper. Whatever, that's the story of my life. The S1 is the steel top of the line frame. So we've got a 150 mil Lyric up front. That should tell you that this bike means business. This thing is meant to party. We have a 64 degree head angle, 420 chainstay, which I'm really excited about. I love a short tucked in chainstay and a 450 mil reach on a size medium. And that's just where you want it. And this bike comes in at $3,000. Frankly, there are a few things I am already frustrated about on this bike. First and foremost is the cable routing. It is sloppy at best. It does not look like much thought was put into where these cables go. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. The metal flake green looks awesome with the chrome decals. I think it looks really, really good. Oh, this is going to be exciting. We've got a steel frame. Lots of clearance for tires. Short rear end should be playful. This is kind of like a nice middle ground between my middle child titanium and the Hanzo ESD. It's not quite as slack as the Hanzo ESD. It's not quite as long. It's got the same amount of travel. Um, the rear end can get a little bit shorter on the Hanzo or a little bit longer, but man, I think this is right in the middle of that. And I've been feeling lately that aggressive bikes have been getting a little too aggressive, and I think this is going to find the sweet spot, but we'll see. But on paper, I've been real excited to try this. They also came out with an aluminum version of this for 2021. Seeing how long it took me to get this one in, I'm not hopeful that I'll get the aluminum one in, but I would love to try it out to see if it's stiffer than this, or if they've got that magic formula where they can get the lightweight aluminum and still get that nice ride feel that this has. We'll see. I think they spec the right wheels and tires for a build like this. They're nice, wide, 30 mil inner wheels, and Stans has my favorite rim profile. I've never pinch flatted on a Stans before. That's not saying it can't be done. It definitely can, but they're, the shape of their rim when you bottom out on something, it is so much more forgiving to your tire. I really like that. I love the 2.4 dissector rear. It's got an XO Plus casing on the rear. And we've got a Maxxis Asagai 2.5 up front, and it's also an XO Plus. We've got Praxis cranks. I really like this Physique saddle, at least the look of it, the Alpaca. It looks like a women's saddle, but I think it's going to be comfortable for men too. DMR Death Grip Grips. It's full SLX. SLX cassette with an XT derailleur with an XT hub. We've got Shimano four piston hydraulic brakes with beefy 203 mil rotors front, 180 rear. This is very close to how I would spec it. Unfortunately, it comes with 175 mil cranks. I've been enjoying shorter cranks lately, but at least they put 170s on the small and then 175s on everything else bigger than that. Full external cable routing, which I love to see but I don't love the cable routing. I wonder if they routed it here on the side so it would photograph well, because we always photograph bikes from the drive side, and this would be completely hidden by the tube and you wouldn't see it in pictures. With a lot of people buying bikes online and not seeing them in person, that's something you wouldn't notice till you get it. But I don't like it on the side. I'd prefer it was either on here on the top of the down tube, on the bottom of the top tube, or on the bottom of the down tube. But on the sides, just kind of in the way, and you can catch that with your leg. I also don't like, it's goofy here. It goes under the bottom bracket, but this is loose. It doesn't have something to tie it in there. And the angle it goes from this chainstay up to here is really weird for your brake to make that big of a bend. I would have routed it underneath the top tube. Then you'd have a straight brake line there, straighter line for the shifter. I think everything just would have been a lot cleaner. But kind of interesting, I just think the cable routing was an afterthought and it just, I don't know, just doesn't look as polished as it should for a $3,000 bike in my opinion. 
So there's some really cool things to be excited about this. Fantastic wheel and tire choice. Fantastic suspension. A steel frame with awesome geometry, on paper at least. 76 degree seat angle. 64 degree head angle. 450 mil reach on a size medium. 420 chain stay. I'm thinking this thing's going to be a lot of fun to ride if it's not too stiff. I can't wait to try it out. Make sure you're subscribed so you're notified when I drop the full ride review of this bike. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.